As of now, we've spoken about two important concepts, electricity and magnetism. And in the past few lectures, we've been trying to build a relationship between electric fields and magnetic fields. And we came up with two important results. The first result is the following. If you take any stationary charge, be it positive or negative, that stationary charge will not produce a magnetic field. But if you take that same charge and you allow it to move along a wire, that moving charge or current will produce a magnetic field. Now, result number two is the following. If you take any magnet that's producing a magnetic field and you put a wire that's carrying a current through that magnetic field, that wire will feel a force due to that magnet. In other words, magnetic fields will exert a force on moving charge or current in a wire. And these two important results built our relationship and allowed us to combine electricity and magnetism into one important concept known as electromagnetism. Now, let's explore the following question. So we just said that electric current will in fact produce a magnetic field. So moving charge will produce a magnetic field. But is the reverse question true? Will a magnetic field create an electric current? So let's explore the above question using the following experiment. Now this experiment was actually conducted by Faraday himself. Now in this apparatus we have two electric circuits. Electric circuit number one and electric circuit number two. And these two electric circuits are connected by a metal ring composed of iron. Now this electric circuit number one has a battery that has a 12 volt voltage. And it also has a, a switch that can be switched closed or open. Now, this electric circuit does not have a battery, but what it does have is a meter that can read a change in our electric current. Now, what is the basis of this experiment? Why did we set this experiment up in the following way? Well, if the magnetic field does in fact produce an electric current, that means the following should be observed. The second we flip this closed, an electric current will flow from the anode or our electrons will flow from our anode to our cathode. An electron current will flow in the opposite direction by convention, so it will flow in this direction. And this electric current will produce a magnetic field. And this magnetic field should be felt by this wire, this second electric circuit. And that means if it's true that a magnetic field creates an electric current, there will be an electric current created in our electric circuit number two. And this meter will therefore be able to detect a change in current. So let's see what actually was observed. The second we flip the switch down, a current began to flow. So electrons began to flow in this direction. So if we wait a little, what will happen is a steady constant current will be created because we're assuming that we're using a direct current. A battery produces a direct current. So when the flow of current began to go through this wire, what happened was a constant magnetic field was created. In other words, a steady constant current produced a constant steady magnetic field. And this constant steady magnetic field was not able to create an electric current. So this meter read zero. The arrow pointed to zero. So once again, a steady constant current produces a constant magnetic field which does not produce a current in our electric circuit number two. But what Faraday noticed was the following. The second he flipped the switch closed, and the second he opened that switch back up, he noticed that this arrow did in fact move. It moved down and it moved up. Why was that? That means at some point in time, when I flip it down and flip it up, there must be a current created in this electric circuit number two. Why is that? Well, the second I flip it down or I flip it up, our current is not steady, it's not constant, it's a change in current because electrons just begin moving, right? So our current is increasing or decreasing depending on if I close it or open it. So it's a change in current and in fact 
only a changing current will produce a changing magnetic field. And only a changing magnetic field, a non-constant magnetic field, will produce a current in our electric circuit number two. And this current is known as induced current. And the process of using a changing magnetic field to induce a current is known as electromagnetic induction. So Faraday conducted a second type of experiment where he demonstrated electromagnetic induction. Now this experiment was set up in the following way. We had a closed circuit that was connected to a meter and this meter read either our voltage difference or our difference in our electric current. And he had a magnet and what he did with the magnet is he either kept it still, moved it down and moved it up. Now, when he kept our magnet still, the magnet produced a constant magnetic field pointing from our north pole to our south pole of our magnet. And this constant magnetic field, as we saw earlier, did not produce or did not induce an electric current in our wire. And that means this arrow pointed at zero or to zero. Now, when he moved it down and when he moved it up, he produced a changing magnetic field, right? And that means that that did induce a current. In this guy, it induced it this way, and in this guy, it induced it pointing this way. In other words, the magnitude of induction was the same, but our direction was different. And we'll see why it was different when we'll talk about Lenz's law. For now, it's sufficient to conclude that only a changing magnetic field will induce a current in another wire.